Hey guys, today we're going to be showing you how to change a common rail fuel injector on a diesel engine. Uh, I'm going to be doing it on a C9 Cat, but most of the principles are the same from the different manufacturers. Um, if you're doing a Cummins or Detroit, whatever, you know, just check with the manufacturer for the exact specific for torque specs and what needs to be replaced. But for the most part, it's quilt tube and injector and fuel line. Uh, most manufacturers are going to the style engine because they're more efficient and they're faster starting. Uh, Cat did these on their last series of smaller truck engines. Uh, I'm going to be doing an RV and uh, go ahead and check out the video. Thanks. So we have our RV C9 Cat here with a common rail. We're going to be changing the number four injector. You can see the rail there between the intake tube and the valve cover. And before we start tearing this apart, I just wanted to go over something. Uh, real quick with you guys and this is the rail I'm talking about. I wanted to take a quick second before we start on this to discuss what fluid injection is and I'm not talking about the injector I'm talking about when high pressure fuel can pierce your skin and it can actually kill you so uh, you need to be real cautious on these systems that rail pressure can get up to 30,000 psi. If you have a fuel leak on this engine or any hydraulic system, any high pressure petroleum based system, do not get your hands, your face, anything close to it. Okay, if, if after you change this line or whatever, the fuel's leaking, do not put your hand around it to find out. Uh, if you type in fluid injection injury on your phone in a Google search, uh, in fact, I'll show you a, just a quick snippet of what comes up. Okay, that's what it looks like. They have to cut your hand open and let it basically leach out. Uh, you don't want that. So if there's any leaks or anything after or before, just uh, try to look at them from a distance or, you know, get like a piece of paper or something. Never get your hands or any body parts close to these engines um, when they're running. Okay, just wanted to say that before we start. So getting back, we have our common rail, our fuel jumper lines runs the uh, pretty much the entire length of the head. Uh, each injector is going to have its own jumper line. So there's number six. You can see it going into the head. And it uh, connects to the quill tube at the end there. And then that's what runs into the head. And we're going to be changing number four, which if you go to number four cylinder and work your way back, it is that line right there. Got to remove the valve cover first. So we have our valve cover off. And here's the number four injector. Uh, now, normally on a C9, on a Huey system, you would just remove the bolt and then pop the injector right out. But not on a C9S, because it has a common rail, which means it has this quill tube that connects to the injector through the head, which you have to remove first. And, uh, really, that's the hard part about these, removing the quill tube. So, first thing you're going to do is disconnect the uh, electrical harness going to the injector. And then you're going to take your trusty brake clean or solvent. I usually use brake clean just because it dries quickly and I spray off the uh, the lines going to the number four injector because you don't want any dirt getting into the, uh, the quilt tube bore or the common rail so I spray off both lines and then we're going to remove the fuel jumper line that goes from the common rail into the quilt tube so we're gonna remove and it doesn't really matter you're just gonna loosen both of them up uh, it doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm going to loosen both of them up. Uh, I'm going to do the outer one first. And Cat, for some reason, uses different size uh, fittings on both of theirs. They have a 3 quarter and 11 16 going to the quill tube. For some reason, sometimes the updated lines have uh, the same size, but for whatever reason, they made them different. So, loosening up the the nuts holding the line on. Now these lines are not reusable. You do not reuse these fuel lines. So if you're doing an injector, no matter which one you're doing, you're gonna take this line and throw it away. Before you do, uh, hang on to it. We're gonna use it to help remove the quill tube in a little bit. So fuel line is off. Next thing you have to do is remove the quill tube nut. This is what presses the quill tube into the head and into the injector. And these torque to about 50 foot pounds. So uh, they're a little tight on there. If you can get a, uh, a larger ratchet, it usually works better than a wrench, but I wasn't going to take all the intake off just to get a, uh, a ratchet on it. So we're going to loosen that nut up 
And sometimes that nut, for some reason, is super coated with paint. Um, you might have to use a little bit bigger size wrench than uh, you're used to on these cats because they really paint the heck out of them. So you take the nut off, and you're going to reuse the nut. So we're going to put that aside, and we're going to clean it. And next is to pull the quill tube out. Now, the only thing that holds it in there after the nut's out is a, a single O-ring. But uh, it's still kind of a pain in the butt to pull out because uh, that O-ring can be hard to get, and there's really nothing to grab onto with that quill tube, and you don't want to damage it, because on the cats, you can reuse it as long as it's not damaged. So what I do is I take that jumper line that I just removed, and I take it, and if there's enough room, you can pop it out just by pulling on it. This one, uh, not quite as enough room, so try to put a little pry bar in there, and all you have to do is just pop it out. So it's popped out, quill tube is out, now you take your jumper line back off, and I have a couple Jumper Life saves saved that I kind of have uh, modified on some of these engines to help pull the uh, quill tubes out. I've, you know, I've either turned them or cut them, um, put little handles on them just for help popping these out. But other than that, you can throw that line away unless you're going to keep it for that. So remove your quill tube. Uh, try not to get any dirt or anything from the engine in the quill tube bore. And there's your quill tube. The, the, uh, you can see the yellow seal there right there you can replace that and you'll see there's a little ball it's uh that's an alignment dowel actually and you're going to check your sealing surface of the quill tube make sure there's no flaking or damage to it and uh, other than that that's reusable on the cats i believe on the cummins they are not reusable though but check your manufacturer for that uh, you can feel the uh the alignment port in there you stick your finger in the quill tube bore so next thing we're going to do is remove the injector. So on these it's just a single hex internal hex head bolt. We're gonna detorque it. Loosen it up. And these only torque to about 20 foot pounds, so they're usually not uh not too bad to get out. And we're gonna take the bolt out. Then you're going to take your heel bar that I used to help pull the quilt tube out that I've also used on my other injector videos. And I use this on all the injectors, pretty much works really well. And you're going to put it under the hold down bracket and just unseat it. And these only have two O-rings, they're pretty easy to unseat. If you've ever done normal C7s, they're pretty hard, but these are pretty easy. So here is your injector, common rail injector. A little bit smaller than the older ones. The uh, And notice on your hold down bracket, it says C9. If you flip it around, it'll say C7 because they use the same one on the C9s and the C7s. Uh, whichever motor you're using, just make sure the C9 is facing up, or if you're doing a C7, the C7 is facing up. And this is how your quilt tube sits in the head. It basically just presses uh, metal to metal against the injector there and applies that high pressure fuel to the injector, and then it's electronically fired by the ECM. And we are, uh, we are done with removing the injector. So I've got our injector out. First thing we're going to do after that is clean the injector bore. Um, use our trusty brake clean and I just spray it down the injector bore there. And what that's going to do is remove any residue, fuels, carbon that's in that injector bore. And it's going to wash it into the cylinder there. And then I take this, uh, this OTC brake evac system that I've outfitted with a little bit extra longer hose. And we're going to pull all that fuel and brake clean that I sprayed in there out of the cylinder because you don't want that to be in the cylinder when you're first fired up from my hydraulic kit. So I give it a good few seconds of uh, purging it. And this is just a little vacuum setup I use. I use it on all my injectors uh, when I'm doing injectors just to clean the bore out. So once the injector bore is good and clean, and the cylinder has been evacuated. Just uh, you always want to look down the injector bore, make sure there's no pieces of O-ring or something has fallen in it while you've been working on it. That's the last thing you want to do is get something down that cylinder. So now that that is clean, we are ready to install the new injector. So here's your new injector. Uh, it's going to have a 12-digit and a 4-digit code on the side of it. Can't really see it that well. 
this dark room, but it sits right here on these cats. Let's see if I can get a little bit better lighting, if you can see them. Okay, there you go. So there's part number, 12-digit uh, confirmation code, and then a four-digit code. You want to write those down just in case uh, in the future you can program the injector. It's got uh, two O-ring seals, and the new injectors, it looks like they have a missing O-ring in the center. Uh, they've redone the injectors. As you can see, here's the old one. Uh, they've moved the lower O-ring down, and I'm not sure why they've done that, but Cat did do that. So if you get a new injector, you're like, hey, this isn't the same thing. Yeah, that, that's pretty normal. Also, you can see the injector has an alignment tang. That tang, there is a hole in the head that you're going to align with when you install it. So we have our injector. You're always going to coat your O-rings with just a little bit of engine oil. doesn't need to be dripping off there. And thank you to my drop light for dropping. So we're going to put a little bit of oil on these injector seals. Uh, do that on all injectors. Uh, you don't want a dry seal going into that bore. And uh, Cat also recommends you lubricate the injector bore as well. Um, you could, if you wish, with a little bit of a, a light damp rag or something, but I usually just lubricate the, uh, the injector seals themselves. And next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your injector hold down bracket, make sure it's saying C9 facing up, if it's a C9, of course, C7. And I put it in the slot before I put the injector in because a lot of these you can't put it in after you have installed it. And then you're going to slowly lower it in. You're not going to let it drop. You're just going to place it in. And then you're going to push it down a little bit just to seat the first injector seal. So it's in. You can go ahead and connect the electrical connector now if you wish or you can wait until after you've torqued it. So you're going to use a new injector bolt. Uh, Cat does not advise reusing any injector bolts on any other engines. Always replace your injector bolts, cheap insurance. If that breaks, uh, that could do some serious engine damage too, so you want the cheap insurance. And we're just gonna run it in by hand first. Tighten it up. And you could use a, you know, an air ratchet or a real weak impact wrench. You don't want to over torque the bolt. And I don't like using impacts or heavy impacts. If you're using like a lightweight electric one to run it in, that's okay. And then you're going to torque it. Uh, these torque to 20 foot pounds on these cat engines. Like I said, if you're doing a Cummins or a different manufacturer, um, you know, you have to look up their specific specs. Um, you know, I, I, done a lot of these injectors I still look them up every time I do one just in case because sometimes cat updates you know part number information or uh, ways you install things torque specs they're always updating it so that's torqued and now your cool tube I have placed a new I've washed this in the solvent tank inspected it and put a new seal on there I'm going to lightly coat the quill tube seal check the face make sure it's not damaged and then you're going to be careful when installing this. You don't want any dirt or anything getting on that sealing face. And remember that alignment tang I talked about on the quilt tube. What you're going to do is install the quilt tube into the head and then rotate it until it pops into place. Let's see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've installed it. You don't have to drive it in or anything. It, it'll go in lightly. And then you're going to rotate it, and you'll see that it'll pop in. Right, right there. See it pop in? Okay. Now make sure it doesn't come back out when you use your quill tube. And I use just a little bit of uh, engine oil on the quill tube threads there. And then you're just going to run it in by hand to get it started. And then you're going to torque the quill tube nut. Now make sure that, uh, that quill tube does not pop back out while you're installing this quill tube nut, especially if it has a lot of paint on it. So what I like to do is as I'm running in the quill tube, every once in a while I'll try to turn the quill tube to make sure it hasn't popped back out and is able to rotate. As long as it can't rotate, that means it's still in its little alignment dial area. So I have, uh, this is set to 52 foot-pounds, our uh, quill tube nut. And we're just gonna run it down and then torque it. 
and kind of a pain. These, uh, I've done them before where I've done multiple injector where I've removed the rail, the common rail. That makes all these quill tube setups a lot easier to pull, but then again, you have to change every line you remove. Um, all these fuel lines on the quill tube or on the uh, common rail setup. So the one coming from the high pressure pump and all the injector ones have to be replaced if they're removed. So just remember that if you do, and you you never crack these lines for any reason. Um, you know, if you think there's air in the system, whatever, do not ever crack a common rail line. Not only that, you have to replace it if you ever loosen it. So here's our new line, and the reason you have to replace it is because they use a soft metal sealing face on the ends of these lines, and it will shape to whatever surface it's sealing to, and that's why you're not supposed to reuse them. Um, I'm sure there have been guys that have reused them, but I've never reused one. And like I said before, you know, where you're talking about the, you know, fluid injection problem, um, that's, the lines are not that expensive. It's really not a good idea to reuse them. Um, especially if a line were to blow or something, you know, you could cause some, you know, uh, personal damage, uh, engine damage. So just always get new lines is kind of a waste in my opinion but hey that's how they design these motors and with those pressures I understand why so I run them down my hand and uh, there's actually a torque specification on cats here it has you torque the uh, the common rail nut first and I'm gonna use a crow's foot for obvious reasons it's not a bolt and I'm gonna torque the outer one to 20 foot-pounds so we're gonna put our torque wrench on the outer nut, the one on the common rail, and then just run it to 20 foot-pounds, which can be kind of a pain, to be serious, um, especially on some of the truck engines, there's a lot of wiring and stuff in the way, this is actually not too bad for being an RV. So that's torqued, and then the inner nut, the one going to the quill tube is a little different. Uh, this one you're actually going to torque to about 11 foot-pounds, it's actually 135 inch-pounds, but um, round that up it's about 11 foot pounds so if you can get your I have a little real small torque wrench and uh, I torque it to 11 foot pounds then you're supposed to turn it 60 degrees after that with a wrench which is one flat and then you're done just put your valve cover back on if you like the video thank you uh, like and subscribe